Welcome to NCIX Tech Tips. Today we are doing another ultimate question final answer episode. We did one about Intel versus AMD and this one is going to be about AMD or ATI versus NVIDIA or NVIDIA. NVIDIA hasn't been acquired in the last couple of years here so their name is still the same. Basically, we're gonna cover all the bases because I get this question so many times. Linus, I'm building a new gaming rig. Which do you prefer, AMD or NVIDIA? Which should I get, AMD or NVIDIA? And so we're gonna walk you through all the different advantages and disadvantages of the green and the red team and how they compare to each other and how to answer that question once and for all. Now the most common misconceptions when it comes to AMD versus NVIDIA is, oh well, AMD runs really hot, or you know, NVIDIA's cards are really loud, or any kind of generalization, honestly, doesn't make any sense. Because there are always going to be tons of exceptions. AMD and NVIDIA are leapfrogging each other all the time, whether it comes to performance, whether it comes to power efficiency, heat output, noise, it, it doesn't matter. It's always changing and it's always dynamic. So it's never as simple as saying, you know, NVIDIA cards are way better performing than NVIDIA cards. For example, the one I'm holding right here, the 8800 Ultra, yeah, it absolutely smoked everything from the Red Camp. However, I can give you an example. The 7970, when it was released, had months where it was far and away, like by double digit percentages, the fastest single GPU card on the planet compared to anything that NVIDIA could put out. And then NVIDIA, oh, and it was also way more power efficient. And then NVIDIA went ahead and released the GTX 680, which went ahead and took that power efficiency and performance crown right back. So it's always going to be changing. It's always going to be different. However, there are some generalizations, generalizations that you can make. So let's talk about the things that are different. Remember, neither NVIDIA nor AMD actually make graphics cards. These are technology partners, and then they have what are called board partners, whether it's an MSI, or Sapphire, or EVGA, or Galaxy, or whatever. So these are the board partners. These are the guys who are actually manufacturing the card, the PCB, the chips that go on it, the cooler, putting it together, putting their warranty service behind it, getting it to a retailer, getting it on a shelf and selling it to you and then supporting it. So one of the huge ways that they differ is through their board partners. For example, on the AMD side, they've only got one board partner that offers a lifetime warranty, XFX. On the NVIDIA side, well, this is all at the time of filming. Warranties are changing all the time, which is another thing, always in flux. On the NVIDIA side, there are actually multiple partners who offer lifetime or, or special extra warranty policies outside of the normal one or three years or whatever else the case may be. Some of the other key differences are in the focuses that these companies have. So AMD, for example, has better driver support and cleaner overall easier support for multi-monitor, including multi-monitor gaming. iFinity is just more mature than NVIDIA Surround because NVIDIA Surround, again at the time of filming, is only in its first generation of implementation on a single graphics card, whereas AMD has been doing it for three generations now since the 59 or the 5870 and the 5850 launched. On the other hand, what about stereoscopic 3D? NVIDIA has had a huge focus and emphasis on stereoscopic 3D again for several generations now. And for that reason, uh, 3D vision, NVIDIA's solution using shutter glasses and supported certified monitors is, in my experience, easier to use and light years ahead of AMD's implementation, which involves a middleware and only like one or two compatible monitors, which are pretty expensive. Um, so in terms of ease of use, in terms of performance, in terms of compatibility, a much better solution for stereoscopic 3D gaming. So these are two key differences between these companies. There's also some other things. NVIDIA, for example, has PhysX support in CUDA, whereas AMD is dumping more resources into OpenCL for their, uh, for their compute solution to compete with something like CUDA. Um, here's something. Bitcoin, for example, performs dramatically better on AMD cards. Folding at home performs better on NVIDIA cards, this is all at the time of filming. So, what's the deal then? 
Oh, actually, here, one more thing. Okay, okay, so this is a reference card. This uses a, a stock NVIDIA design PCB and cooler. Another thing that differentiates the partners is the kinds of solutions they can come up with, whether it's better coolers, better PCB designs. This guy right here is a Hawk Edition card from MSI, which has, like, additional circuitry that goes on the back of the GPU to provide more stable power for extreme sub-zero overclocking. It has a beastly cooler. It has a way overbuilt PCB with more power phases. So that's yet another way that they differentiate. You can't say, oh, well, one is louder than the other because the partners are the ones that implement all of that. And that is the way that they differentiate. Although there are those general rules between NVIDIA and AMD. Now, you guys might be pretty disappointed by the overall answer here, but the conclusion is, you know, whether you want different connectivity, for example, Galaxy had GeForce cards that had multi-monitor outputs back before the 680 and the 670 supported it. Uh, AMD has had reference cards even that support up to six monitors off a single card using mini display port. Whatever it is you're looking for, it's always going to come down to the unique position that you're in and the unique choice that you have to make. You have to do your research. You have to ask people who are educated or you have to do reading on review sites. Some of my favorites are Hardware Canucks and Antec. Those are really my two favorites. If you want to look at the performance, if you want to look at the features they have, such as, I mean, even things like um, offloading video encoding to the GPU instead of using your CPU for it. All kinds of neat and cool stuff that they can do. I mean, for example, NVIDIA cards. Uh, certain ones, supported ones, can accelerate Adobe applications. So the answer is there is no answer. And I'm sorry, and I hope that for those of you out there who have someone, you know, asking you AMD versus NVIDIA, I hope that you link them to this video because I hope this explains in a meaningful way that you just, it ain't that simple. Because everyone has an opinion and everyone has priorities, whether it's silence or whether it's 3D performance or whether it's stereo performance or multi-monitors, and everyone's going to have a different personal experience because I'm sure you've heard someone say, NVIDIA drivers are crap, and someone say, AMD drivers are crap. And you've probably heard someone say, AMD drivers are great, and you've heard someone say, NVIDIA drivers are great. You know what? They're all probably right in their own personal experience. So you just have to read forums and hardware sites, watch videos like from me where I do reviews of video cards from time to time. That's why I have all these video cards. Thank you for checking out this video on NCIX Tech Tips and don't forget to subscribe.